Hi, let's compare Gibbs free energy with equilibrium, the equilibrium constant. So it's delta G and K. We can do a lot of um, really easy qualitative observations just by um, knowing the signs um, or the approximate value of delta G and K. It's pretty cool. Um, so here's an equation that relates Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium of constant. So here's your free energy that's in kilojoules per mole. R is going to be the gas constant, but we have to use the 8.314 joules divided by mole times kelvin joules because we're dealing with energy delta g t of course is temperature in kelvin and then natural log of k that's the equilibrium constant and remember that's products over reactants um, so if we have negative delta g that means k must be greater than one because if you have k greater than one products are greater than reactants when you have a number greater than one natural log greater than one it is going to give you um, a positive value. Positive times negative gives you a negative. Um, so memorize that. When you have a negative delta G, K is greater than one, which means your alpha from this is, it's product favored and it's spontaneous. So for, um, if I'm given just simple negative delta G, right away I know, okay, K is greater than one, product favored, spontaneous. You wanna have all those memorized. Make it make sense that it fits together. Um, now, if it's a positive delta G, then K is less than one. Um, so if I have a value here, K is less than one, so I have more reactants and products, the natural log of um, K, that if the natural log of a decimal, something less than one, is going to be a negative value. Negative times negative is positive. Um, so when I have a value less than one, I know that's reactant favored, more reactants and products, and it means it's non-spontaneous. It's going to require energy, and yep, sure enough, positive delta G requires energy. Now, if you have a really special, special situation where G equals zero, that means that the K must be one. Um, now, an example, I took the um, Ka value, equilibrium expression, acid ionization for acetic acid, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 at 25 degrees C, and we want to determine what is the um, delta G value. Now, I want to stop you. Just knowing that this is very reactant favored, less than one, okay, 10 to the minus five. This is a small number. Right away, I can predict, well, if K is less than one, I predict delta G is positive. I know it's going to be reactant favored, obviously right here, which means it's non-spontaneous. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So I've got my negative 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin times 298.15 K because it was 25 degrees C, put it in Kelvin times the natural log of the 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Now, when I did that in my calculator, gave me a negative number. Natural log of anything less than one is negative. So negative times negative gives me a positive number. So delta G, our Gibbs free energy is positive 27,000 joules per mole. I just divided by a thousand and got it to 27 kilojoules per mole. Um, oh, so sorry, I meant to put that's a positive right there. Sorry, I <laughs> missed one line, makes a difference. A positive 27, sure enough, non-spontaneous reactant favored, and um, you can see positive delta G, K is less than one. Now, you could be given delta G and have to find the equilibrium expression. That, um, let me rearrange this for you. To undo a natural log, you have to do the E. So I'm going to divide the RT over and then raise both sides to the E. So you're going to have K equals, sorry about that you guys with the announcement, K equals E raised to the negative delta G divided by RT if you have to do that backwards, just a reminder on the math. Okay, good work. If you need more help, go to the uh, Entropy and Free Energy playlist. Thanks so much.